Hello, B Squad. Welcome back to another episode of V Girl TV. Welcome back guys, welcome back to my canal, the YouTube. I am back with another video and I'm with, you know, none other than the Mr. Amir. A disclaimer, you might hear my daughter in the background whining, but she's okay. Anyway, today we're going to talk about Amir's school experience all while we're trying sushi in Panama. We've had sushi at um, different restaurants. This particular restaurant is called Sugoi. We always usually order there, but this particular sushi I have never had before. So I am going to try it. Amanda, do you want to tell them what you got? I got every tempura and some toy fingers. Basically the same thing. It's I mean, not the same thing. It's basically french fries and tenders. Just a different name. And that's it. And I usually always order the Ebi Rock. The Ebi Rock is... Um, cooked chicken with it's like this sauce with shrimp on top but because the sh for some reason they like wrap it around with this thing i don't even know what the heck it is and it usually breaks me out and i realized that one time i ate it and made my baby's uh acne worse so i'm not eating that so i got the sucra sakura oh sakura sorry um and this is what it looks like Okay, um, it is salmon with cooked corvina with avocado and everything is, is cooked. And then I also got the ebi tempura like Amir as well. And the ebi tempura is just basically shrimps. You guys know what, yeah. And this is what it looks like. So yeah, so I ended up getting that and I'm to drink. I am drinking my you know my favorite guys my lacrocs and yeah so that's what we're having for lunch and i'm super excited i'm trying to like make space on my table because this table is not that big why are you looking at me like that um, you can eat you don't have to wait for me okay i mean it's like super greedy um, so anyway we are going to actually talk about amir's experience in school um, this vlog is really for people who have kids, school age kids, and they're interested in moving to Panama. Why am I talking like that? I'm moving to Panama. And they're interested in moving here. Um, you, and you have kids that, you know, they're obviously if you have kids, they're going to be nervous about moving to a new country. And what better way for you to get firsthand experience other than hearing it straight from the horse's mouth. Amir is 12 years old. He is graduating from sixth grade. Um, here, the kids graduate from sixth grade and then seventh, eighth, and ninth grade is what is considered junior high school. And 10th, 11th, and 12th grade is what is considered high school. Um, so he's graduating, uh, well, yeah, like right now. And his prom is actually Saturday. Um, so Amir, tell them about your experience. Amir has been in, been in school here in Panama since he was, what, five years old. He's been here since fifth grade. He did pre-kinder in Brooklyn. I don't need, do you remember that? He said he remembers it for the most part. So yeah, if you were to, if a kid your age was supposed to ask you what is school like here in Panama, what would you say? Repeat it. If, a, if somebody your age came to you and said, hey, you know, Amir, what is school like in Panama? What would you say? I would say, it's it's good it's pretty good uh depending on what grade you are in why do you say it depends on what grade i say that because of for example for my experience i go to private school from kindergarten we were eating on the floor but they did put us to watch tv and we didn't really do much and we got to sleep and whatever whatever you guys slept in kindergarten yeah we were just like and it really wasn't that iffy iffy. Going up to like first grade, okay, you start to learn like one plus one. But you are we're already learning one plus one in kindergarten, but you're learning more advanced. Not as advanced because 
first, it's still first grade. I'm doing the same thing in second grade, just a, a, a harder recap, but not that hard. Third grade is when it starts to get like a little, a little complicated for primary. And once you have fourth grade, it's, it's, a, it's a recap. It's like a recap for, it's like a recap of third grade. And yeah, once you, it's when you, once you go to fifth grade, it's when you, it starts to get hard. Well, harder for middle school, as we know it in here. But this is just my personal experience, because you start to learn more things. You start to learn harder stuff, such as like fractions and all that type of stuff, all that good stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So in sixth grade, it's it's, it's a little bit more fun because you learn more, and they make in the te personal teachers this year for me, there were a lot more. They try to make the class more fun. Mm, they try to make, important. They try to make it like not just sitting at a desk, listening to somebody talk, and you copy or whatever. They try to make it like the little games, make it fun, so kids won't just be like, "Oh, I hate coming here. I don't want to come." Because mm -hmm. they were actually trying. They're actually caring. They wanted to do what they were doing. I'm not gonna say. I'm not. I can't speak for all teachers, but just from my personal experience. So for, for some teachers that I got, they were good. They were amazing, actually, and some of them, I can't really... They were not so good. They weren't. They just wanted to... Old school school. Like old school teaching. Old school teaching. You sit, you watch the, the board, you write, read books, that's it. Okay, what would you say as far as your, like, friends, like, social, your social activities in, in school? school? Well... That's actually a pretty good question because I've been actually very popular amongst my friends. And I remember I got in trouble for having friends in fourth grade. Yeah. Because I. Hold on, let me give them the backstory. The backstory was that I got called because they said that Amir is a leader. Apparently, they said that. He sits at his desk, everyone circles his desk, everyone talks to him, and it's a distraction to class. So I told the teacher, I'm like, okay, well, if they're coming to him, why don't you tell them to go sit in their chair? Like, I don't understand. It's not like he's getting out of his chair and telling them to come to him, you know? Or he's getting out of his chair to go speak to them. They're getting out of their chair to come to his desk to talk to him. And I was really with the teacher and the director and I was just like, you know, I don't understand why he's getting in trouble because of them that they literally have to control themselves. Like, it's not his fault. And they were like, yeah, but you know, he's a he's popular and he's a leader, so he has to tell them to go back to their desk. And then what happened after that? So, I listened for a while. I mean, I said a while, just be like, man, I got tired of it, no. But anyway, I said, yo, go to your seat, because after they gon' they gonna, get me in trouble and they might get you in trouble but I'm probably gonna get the punishment harder because the school I'm not gonna say what but they I had a thing with the school so I prefer to go to your seat okay they were doing it for a while after that the trimester ended we came back to school everybody's number was white and the same thing happened they still keep coming to your day so so I just so and this and they still do it to this day mm -hmm. so so at this point I just like you know it's not I don't really care I don't care. Do you rebel. think do you do you think that your school has like bullying? I mean, I wouldn't say I have bullying, but I would say there'll be like teasing, but friendly teasing, and in between friends, basically. Mm -hmm. Not like oh, that's my friend, but it's actually my bully. But I wouldn't, for the most part, I wouldn't say that there's bullying. Like, you know, like how in America, like, kids will get, like, bullied and write stuff on people's lockers. Well, I have, I can't say that because I only see them movies, but. But it happens in real life, though. Okay, well, I'm just saying, because I ain't never see it. Oh. But I'm asking, do you, do you experience those things in school? No, no, because number one, there are no lockers. <laughs> but, no, I don't even want to see that. I was really like, there's, like, people that have beef. And they would have like beef and they would just like, oh, this and that, they'll talk trash. Next day, 
Yo, what's up, my homie? Yo, you wanna do this? You wanna do that? Come to my place. My friend friends at today. And we took a couple people in the group. And then got into a fight. And one blocked the other, and this and that. For a week, and the next thing you know, just back friends again. Laughing. So basically, so it's just, like they fight and then they're friends again. It's never any malice to the point never where. Any, oh, I'm not that, that person. Is, I don't mess with that person anymore. anymore. So basically, it's a little bit different. Um, what he's trying to express is because sometimes a man, when he expresses himself, sometimes I'm all confused. He likes to say, and then and then and this and that and this and that. We don't know what this and that is. Um, so basically, what he's trying to say is that when kids in his school get into like fights or altercations, it's really never that serious. Like, they'll fight today, they won't speak for a couple of days, and then the following week they're back friends again. And plus, I don't think the parents would even allow that that type of behavior yeah, in school. Because the, because I'm gonna say this: the people, like the parents. In the school, with all friends. Yes, so the parents they, so are very will, involved. So they will make sure the kids will go back to being friends again. Yeah, the kids, and even if the kids don't go back to being friends, the, the parents will just be like, okay, I don't care, and they will go and they will still speak. Yeah, and the parents will be like, oh, we're going to this person's house. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you don't like them. I'll have more. So Me yeah, personally, from my experience, from a mom's standpoint, the parents in a mere school. They're very involved in their kids' education. Like, they're very involved in activities. They create WhatsApp groups. And it's not like it's just one or two. It's like all of them are like this. Like, every last one of them are like that. So, I've never really experienced any. Only one time when that girl's mother called and said that you oh. called her daughter, whatever name or whatever. And I was just like, okay, I'll speak to him. And then that was that. It was never like... A big deal or anything like that. Who recommend um, kids going to school in Panama? Well, personally, for my school, uh, I would say yes because I go to a private school. I can't speak for public schools, right? Public schools. I have to be somebody else. You know anybody that went to public school? John, but I don't really. Oh, we would have to ask John. But yeah, go ahead. But yeah, from my from my experience, from. My here is my school. I would. Y'all, yeah, I'm sorry. This is so good. Go ahead. I would say, yeah, of course. We can go to school in Panama. But I can't speak for other schools. I know. Some people, some of my friends that live in the Barriera, they will be like, oh, this teacher is so, it's so bad. And this and that. Well, okay. So for people who don't know what a Barriera is, it's basically a, a gated community. It's, it's a gated community. I'm mean, used to saying Barriada. Yeah. Barriada is like barrio, your neighborhood. Okay, go ahead. So yeah, they would be like, oh, they got us doing homework. Yeah, they got it's in like, like 28 papers, and they go to private school. So all the kids that live in the neighborhood, they go to private school? I can't say that, because I don't know. Well, the ones that you know? Uh, Some of them do. Does any of them go to private public school? I don't know. Okay. Well, as a parent, my experience with a mere school has been positive for the most for the most part. If you have like an issue with a teacher, because trust me, some of these teachers be getting beside themselves. It's just human nature. Like nothing is ever going to be um, perfect. You can speak to the director. She's always open to conversation. She's always open to um, suggestions, especially like with this whole. Um, COVID situation that happened when the kids were learning um, virtually, it was a mess. And she was definitely, um, what's what I want to say? She was open definitely open-minded, open -minded, yes. And she was definitely, um, she didn't shut down the things that I had to say. She was very understanding. She was very caring. So for the most part, I um, did not... I don't. I didn't have a bad experience with with Amer School. Um, as far as school in the states versus here, now I can't compare a mayor situation because a mayor went to private school when he was in pre K two. But for me, when I went to school, I did experience bullying. I experienced me having to fight 
in school, like literally like this fight. Um, I grew up in Brooklyn. So my experience is totally different from his experience. Right. But did you go to private school? The what? Did you go to private school or did you went to? No, I went to public school. Um, my experience was the worst. Well, it wasn't the worst. I had fun in high school, but it was literally the strong survive. So the things that I experienced in school, he definitely didn't, didn't experience as far as the negative things. And there were also some positive things that I learned um, growing up in Brooklyn too and going to school, like taking public transportation. I wouldn't advise anyone to let their kids take public transportation in this day and age because it is wild out in these streets. It's like the wild, 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 wild west. Um, so I don't. Amir like, goes on. It's like the, Fortnite. Seriously. Amir is on. He has a bus. So there aren't public buses. I mean, there are kids that take public transportation here. He doesn't. He just doesn't take public transportation. He has a private bus company that uh, takes him to and from school. But me, I have to take the bus and the train to and from school. But in my day, it was a little bit different compared to what's going on right now. So what would I say? I think that our experience is positive with school here in Panama. Um, do you think that you want to finish high school in the States? No. You don't? Well, we don't know where the future will take us. If the future... But if you could choose, would you want to finish high school in the States? No. Well? I'm already learning enough in St. Mary's home. There you have it. Oh, Amir, we forgot about one thing. After school programs. Oh, God. So, I know after school programs is something that you guys might be interested in. Amir is in two different after school programs. He plays chess and he also does soccer. And then what other activities do they have? They have volleyball. I know that. I know they have American football slash flag. Flag football. Flag football. The thing about these these programs though is that you have to pay extra out of pocket. Like it's not part of the curriculum. So if you are interested in putting your kid in any extracurricular activities, you will definitely have to pay out of pocket. And it can go anywhere from ten to fifty dollars a month. First hand experience on how he feels about school. And if you guys have any questions leave it in the comment section and i'll answer them and as usual guys if you like this video make sure you like and subscribe amir is like down in his face in the food he's so greedy he's not even paying attention to i'm you hungry guys. i'll come up with up after okay he's like down in the food but anyway guys if you like this video make sure you like and subscribe and as usual guys peace and love